Tuesday for kids! Hi, welcome back to Try Kids TV. I'm your host, Rachel. Today, we're going to be talking all about the Feast of St. Joseph. So let's get into it. The church traditionally dedicates the month of March to the honoring of St. Joseph, whose feast day is celebrated March 19th. He was chosen by God as a trustworthy guardian and protector of Jesus and Mary, says St. Bernadette of Siena. He has been declared the protector and patron of the Universal Catholic Church. Seven days before the Feast of the Annunciation on March 25th, which celebrates Gabriel's visit to the Blessed Virgin Mary, announcing that she is to give birth to the Messiah, we meet Joseph, her spouse. St. Joseph was born in Bethlehem and worked as a carpenter, an occupation he later passed on to his son. We know St. Joseph as a man of faith obedient to whatever God asks of him, without knowing the outcome. When the angel came to St. Joseph in a dream and told him about the child Mary was carrying, Joseph, and immediately without question or concern for gossip, took Mary as his wife. When the angel came again to tell him that his family was in danger, he immediately left everything he owned, all his family and friends, and fled to a strange country with his young wife and baby. He waited in Egypt without question until the angel told him it was safe to go back. Now, let's get into the customs of St. Joseph's feast day. Joseph's day is a big feast day for the Italians because in the Middle Ages, God, through St. Joseph's intercession, saved the Sicilians from a very dangerous drought. So, in his honor, the custom is for all to wear red. In the same way, green is worn on St. Patrick's Day. On this feast day after Mass, at least in parishes with large Italian populations, a big altar is called the St. Joseph's Table and is laid out with food contributed by everyone. Different Italian regions may celebrate this feast day differently, but all involve special meatless foods. The table, which is always blessed by a priest, will usually be in three tiers, symbolizing the Holy Trinity. The top tier will be a statue of St. Joseph surrounded by flowers. The other tiers might hold additional foods, flowers, especially lilies, candles, figurines, and symbolic breads and pastries. Shaped like a monstrance, chalices, fishes, doves, baskets, St. Joseph's staff, lilies, the sacred and immaculate hearts, carpentry tools, etc. 12 fishes symbolize the 12 apostles. Wine, symbolizing the miracle at Cana. Pineapple, symbolizing hospitality. Lemons for luck. Bread and wine, symbolizing the Last Supper. And pictures of the dead. There will also be a basket in which faithful place prayer petitions. The day ends with a participant taking home a bag that might be filled with bread, fruit, pastries, and cookies. A prayer card, like this one right here, or a blessed fava bean. Keep your lucky green and let it remind you to pray to St. Joseph. You can visit www.fisheaters.com and search St. Joseph's Feast to learn more about this day and find some traditional recipes to cook up for this celebration. You can also find the Pacific link in the description of this video. Let's wrap up this video with a prayer to St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. St. Joseph. Watch over me and care for me, just as you cared for the child Jesus. And by your help, may I come to know your son, and so grow in strength and wisdom, and the favor of God. Amen. Thank you for watching this video, and Deo Gratias. Bye!